Because are we on time? I don't know. Let me see something. Eight oh four. We're getting better. <laughs> Whoops. We are. <laughs> The good Leave all the apps alone or whatever that is down there. But the good no news more. is only like eight people saw that. Okay, good. But there's so many. There's so many. Please stop. What's this one? Now we need to be serious. Okay, but I don't know how to get rid. There, there are so many. Just one more, just because people are coming. All right, I'll stop. I promise. All right, we're done. So, okay, so now like forty people. Oh. Saw so that was um. Next time, I'm controlling the cam. The no, phone. they keep they keep no, adding. I'm I'm gonna control the phone. They keep next, adding so. all this really cool stuff, and it's like you want to see what they are. The only way to test it is when we're live. We can't just sit around testing it at home. Oh, brother! But I like the baby shark one. Okay. All next right. Next time I get to pick it then for you. Okay. Okay. All right. So we should probably start right yes. off with introducing ourselves because um, I. I don't know. Some people may think this is a Saturday Night Live skit, but it's really not. Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> because it's Sunday night, so that's how you know it's not a Saturday that's Night true, Live skit. That's true, that's true. So yeah. we should start. Okay. So, hello, I'm Tim Kaufman. I'm Heather Kaufman. And we run a page called Fat Man Rants, and together we have lost 290 pounds. But more importantly, we've regained our health. We live a healthy, happy, and active life on a whole food, plant-based lifestyle. And we come to you guys live on Sunday um, for little advice, little tips, tricks, that kind of thing. Um, because we know what we did is out there for anyone. And if we can do it... You can too. And I feel like Baby Shark needs to come on right now. <laughs> so, okay. So, it's this week went really fast. Yes, it did. And so, last week you were learning about the marketplace... Oh, yes. That was so fun. Facebook. And so, Heather last week learned about Facebook Marketplace right before we went on air. And um, you'll have to believe me. Just take my word for it. But our whole garage is full of tables and chairs right now. Just a few. From Facebook Marketplace. So, um, Heather's <laughs> found a new hobby. Buying things. Yeah. That we're going to need. Yes. Okay. So... All right, let's Thank get you it so much here. for joining us. Tell us where you're from. And if you tell us where you're from, we already know who you are because it'll say who you are. Hi from Michigan, someone says. There, oh, we're going to get this rolling. Oh, wow. Hi, Angela and Sherry and Tracy. Oh, my goodness. We're, look at beef. Look at somehow you messed everything no, up. That's it. Hi, Donna. Right there. And Wendy. Oh, Sherry made the sweet potato treats. Great. I'm yes. glad you enjoyed them. Okay. So, and hi to everybody else that I didn't get to say hi to. Annette, Dennis. Dennis is Dennis joins us every week and is super cool. I think. Hi Dennis. Um so today, uh right before we went on, Heather said that I'm not allowed to put her on the spot anymore, so she's not gonna be talking. And she also doesn't want to cook. So <laughs> I have to figure out why Heather's here. Moral support. Moral support. And you're <laughs> cute. So that's and that's why people watch okay. this. Next week, if I can get my my uh, treat together, then right. I'll do it next so week. Next week. And, Heather... and I will talk next week as long as I get my stuff together. Okay, right? but I feel like the only way you're telling us this is because next week we're in Washington, D.C. at an event. And there's a good chance that we're going to be on the road when we're supposed to be live. No, we, will be home. we should be home. I feel if, like if I if I think we're not going to make it back 
then I'll just have to do it another time, and we'll just have to be live on the road. And if we're live on the road, your recipe will probably be a Starbucks with soy milk. No, we can show what we take on the road. All right, we got to get going here. So All right, get, your, this, get going here. Yeah, so, um, well, can I, I'm going to put you on the spot. No, I won't put you on, I'm going to put you on the spot in a minute. Oh, um, great. So, so meatloaf, like I can't, I keep thinking with the season change and we get all these different food things, we try to go for more, you know, uh, home style kind of warm comfort food. Mm -hmm. um, and it was almost 90 degrees in Buffalo today. Um, in fact, I was talking to one of my friends from Louisiana and um, it was in the seven, high 70s there. And I'm like, dang, it's Buffalo, and my thing said like 87 degrees. It's been hot for last So, days. it's Very 87 hot. degrees, and is exactly the reason why you do not want to make meatloaf when it's 87 degrees. But, winter's coming, fall is coming, and that's why I kind of thought about this. So, one of the things that we don't have... We call, well, I'm calling it meatloaf. It's not meatloaf. It's not meatloaf. It's um, no like meat. lentil loaf. Um, and so... We don't really have it that often, mostly because it's such a pain in the butt. Um, and all the recipes um, that I come across are super complicated. And the other thing is, you got to make such a big thing of it that it takes forever to cook. And it's like, I get home, and I'm super hungry, and I don't want to wait 45 minutes for a freaking lentil loaf to cook. So I can slice a chunk off of it. Right. Um, or for today, you know, who'd want to turn? You don't want to turn the oven on today. <laughs> exactly. But who would want meatloaf when it's ninety degrees out? I don't know, but maybe someone does. I don't maybe know. Maybe somebody likes it cold, but it's so, not meatloaf. It's not meatloaf. It's, <laughs> it's lentil loaf. Lazy it's, lentil loaf. It's still very lazy. <laughs> so okay, so let, we should start. We should shut up and start cooking. We'll get to it. Well, I just felt like my mother when I said that. Shut up and start cooking. So let's <laughs> shut up and start cooking. Oh, brother. Let's get this turned around for you. Lentils. I forgot to get the lentils out. So he forgot the lentils. Okay. Get the lentils out. Lentils. Okay. I'm going to back up here. See this? Can you see that? Instant pot. Finally busted out the Instant Pot, the real official Instant Pot. Um, and actually, this is the second thing that I've ever made in the official Instant Pot. We always use Cuisinart, which has been very good. Um, but this one's nice. So people always get angry because I don't measure. But I'm going to show you why you don't have to measure tonight. So I'm going to be, it's, it's almost Christmas time. <laughs> So I'm going to be using this little mini loaf pan, okay? Just, just, it's not Christmas, but it will be. So I want to show you how, like what the thought process in my head is by not measuring. I don't have to measure because I know I want to fill this up. So what I'm going to do is my, always my rule when I'm making burgers or whatever, I always do half grain or bean or a mixture of both and then half veggies. That seems to be the little sweet spot. So what I'm gonna do is take, these are these are actually a mix of green and brown lentils. I mixed them together and um, I cooked them off in my Instant Pot. So I know someone already asked how long. So the cool things about lentils is that you can, depending on how you cook them is how the texture is gonna turn out. So I did these for 12 minutes. Mostly because I know if I would have done 10 minutes, they would hold together a little bit more. And if I would do 15 minutes, then they would turn into a little uh, smoother texture. If I was going to, depending on what I'm using them for. So I split the difference. I did these on high pressure for 12 minutes. And they, you can see kind of how they came out. They're kind of holding together, but they're kind of starting to fall apart. And that's what I was looking for. So that's my lentils. I don't know how much is in there, but it's half of my pan. Then, the next thing I'm gonna do, I have some celery, and I have some very well-prepared onion, and I have a knife that doesn't exist. Never fear. I'm sure I have a really dull knife now. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna, I like a lot of onions, so I'm gonna probably take a nice big piece of this, 
I'll probably take more after looking at this. And what I want to do is start dicing this up kind of fine without dicing my fingers up. You could do this in a food processor, but I'm only making one. So I'm just gonna dice these. I kind of want them small, but not like crazy small. And I know someone's gonna yell about my finger being the wrong way, but I'm gonna put that in my little pot. And then I'm probably gonna not fit all this celery in here. I like it kind of um, on a small side. So what I do is I take my knife and I run it lengthwise down the rib. And I'll probably do that twice, maybe even three times. So I have four nice pieces. Because then you don't get those giant chunks. Look at that. I look like I know what I'm doing, actually. And then I'm just going to run my knife straight across these. Do you like that I picked this? Yeah. Do you know what that's for, right? No. It's a very fallish. Oh, very it's, smart. It's the very fall good. So we have fall and Christmas yeah. going. We have everything going here. And it's 90 degrees out, so we have summer cover too. So now All I'm right. going to take my celery. Look at that. See that? So this is, so my pan is kind of almost full. And then when I put it in here, that's what it looks like. I got about half lentils, and then the other half is celery and onion. You could do whatever you want. You could do shredded carrots, you could do mushroom, you could do green pepper. Do whatever you want. I don't care what you do. This is just happened to be what I had on hand. So, now I'm going to start putting all my other stuff in there. Um, what do you have planned for the rest of the lentils? Someone wants to know. Soup Those or... will, okay, that's a good question. Those will go for the rest of the week, whatever you guys actually want. I can turn them into whatever I want. So we could just have them warmed up um, with some tomato puree maybe and put them on top of greens. Uh, we could also make wraps with them. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do. Lentils are so good. And then worst case scenario, you boil up some vegetables, get a nice soup going and put the lentils in last minute and they're done. It's nice. If I'm going to cook lentils, I like to cook enough that I have them for the week. Lentils are so good for you. They're so good for you. Okay, so here we go. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a whole tablespoon, a good one, a good one, of tomato puree, or tomato paste. This is tomato paste. I'm just going to plop that in there. And then as long as I have this spoon out, I'm not doing the full tablespoon. This is liquid aminos. It's not pulling spruce. We had a little bit of an accident. Just a little accident. Hi, little, Donna. It was a very bad accident. I, I'm putting about a half of a tablespoon in here. It, it's not, you can't tell, but that's a half a tablespoon of liquid aminos. And that's only because I had my spoon out. And then I'm going to get rid of this. All right. Then I'm going to take my teaspoon. I have a teaspoon of chili powder. I have a teaspoon of dried minced garlic and a teaspoon of smoked paprika. It doesn't have to be smoked. I think it gives it a nice little extra flavor. So that's all that. And then I'm going to make sure I put these back right. Then I'm going to take some onion powder. I love onion powder, so I'm going to double this. I'm going to put two teaspoons in there. Done. All right. That's basically my spices. If I wanted to, I could put a little black pepper in there. Just, oh, that's a lot of black pepper. Now what I'm going to start doing is taking all this that the uh, paste. I'm going to kind of start mashing that. Here, bring them in here. I'm going to start kind of mashing that paste into the lentils and try to get everything kind of mashed down. And if you do, if the lentils are warm, it will probably help you out a little bit. So once that's all like kind of mashed up, it looks pretty gross. Let's be honest. It looks gross. But once that's all mashed up, Got that. 
Then, the next thing I'm going to do is I made these ahead of time. I'm going to take some oat flour. I just made it in my Nutribullet thing. I'm going to take a quarter cup. And I only know this because I pre-measured it just because of you guys. So I'm going to put that in there. Normally, I would just kind of eyeball it. Now, this is going to be a case where I have to add some water. So I'm going to also get a quarter cup of water. Drip it all the way across the floor and get it in there. <laughs> and splash it everywhere. Hi, Kathy and Devin. All right, here you go. This is starting to look like a nice little mix. Starting to get a little... If you guys weren't watching, I'd probably sprinkle a little bit more oats on here, just to stiffen it up a little bit. Should I do that? No, we're not going to. We're going to leave it. And so this is really gross, so I have to wash this out. Sorry. We didn't think about this, did we? Oh, no, we didn't. We did not think about this. You should have got the other one out, and you could have had two. Had two. One dry and one dirty. All right, so here. Hi, Michelle. Here's the trick. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Clean this all out of here. <laughs> this is quite the uh, saran wrap. So, I'm gonna take my saran wrap, I'm going over this, just like this. Now listen, I could also, I actually bought this for tonight, just for tonight I bought this. I could do this. I could do the same process in this. In this one, I would have three separate loaves. But I'm just showing you how to make one, and you can repeat this process as many times as you like. So what I'm gonna do is take my saran wrap, I'm gonna kind of push it in this. You gotta make sure you get like all the little pockets out, or else it'll look weird when you're done. Like mine's gonna. All right, so that's what that looks like. Now I'm gonna take my, whatever you call this. Lentil mix. Yeah, but it's my mix. It's not really a batter. Your mix. Can they see this? It's quite lovely. All right, this is kind of, this is getting away from me. It's getting a little bit bigger than I wanted. But. So for those just coming on, it's lazy. It's lazy lentil loaf. Yes, it is. So, okay. The next thing I'm going to do, which I don't have out either, is parchment paper. And you need to put something under that. I got this covered. We should, we should get another... This? Yes. No, this is going to be too hard. We're going to have to get our uh, our summer cutting board out. Alright, I'm going to put this over here. This over here. Slide this like, just like a magician. Pop this over. Give this a few hits. You might need help when you do this part, but if you take the saran wrap and kind of open it up and hopefully, no pressure, comes out like that. Ready? It's like a magic trick. Look at that. All right. So it looks weird, but I can tell you it's really good. So I have a little bit, you don't, this is totally optional. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to make a little swirly thing like that. Then I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut. I need to leave a little bit of parchment on here because I need them for handles, but I'm going to cut my parchment out like this with a really dull knife. I had my good knife, but it's in the thing. Ta -da. All right. And this, this is what old people did before Instagram frames. Sorry, <laughs> I had to do that, I'm sorry. So now, Aww. at least you still laugh at me. Now, I'm gonna take my air fryer. Could you do this in the oven? Heck yeah. But I'm going to take my air fryer. 
I'm gonna lift this whole thing up, put it right in my air fryer. You could totally fit two, three, four, whatever. No, you want. not four. Not four. I think not three four. at the most. Right. And then I'm gonna put this in four at 370 for 20 minutes. And hit go. Why not just bake in the pan, someone said? Because it's a pain in the butt. Okay. There. There's your answer. And it takes forever to cook. I'll, I'll talk about it right now. Okay. We'll talk about it right now. Okay. So, so that's a great question. Here's what I found. If you can take meatloaf, not... Why do I keep calling it meatloaf? Where are you going with us? Whoa. I want it a little closer. There. Okay. If you can take lentil loaf and cook it in 20 minutes in that pan, um, you got better pans than I do. Because I, I feel like the pan takes so long to heat up. Um, and, and not only that, what's cool about this in the pan, you just get one crispy thing on the top. top the this crisp it all the way around, making it... Lovely. lovely. It's a, it's a lovely like treat. A little. Um, what, did, what did we say? A hot pocket. Hot pocket. Do they still do them? <laughs> do they still have hot pockets? I don't know. That's kind of what. It was like. Okay. So. So. <laughs> why didn't we just leave it in the pan? So there's a couple reasons. First of all, um, what I really wanted to do is make these in. The thing that I have in my Amazon store, it's a silicone um, tray, like a silicone tray with little bar type things. And that would have worked well, um, but I don't know. You just decided to do this Just tonight. decided to do it because it's a, I think it's a great idea, but that's just me. Um, okay. <laughs> Look at And it also it's for like one or two people. If people aren't really that fond of eating yeah. a lot of meatloaf or maybe don't want to freeze it or you said meatloaf the... you said meatloaf <sighs> lazy loaf <laughs> Lentil then, loaf. you know it makes it's for it could be for one person you could even get a you know a couple two days out of it too but and they're easy to freeze but i think i don't i didn't see the comment right, but i think the few. person was talking about if like if you have that little pan why don't you just cook it in there? Oh, in the air fryer? Um, I don't think I'll put that in the air right. fryer. But but here's the thing. The reason, if you had those little tiny pans in a silicone form, you could you could do that. And um, I don't think you should do silicone in the air fryer. Either, but I've never tried it. But, but I will say this. To try to get the loaf to come out of those little pans, I can't figure it out. Um, you can put parchment in them, but then it gets all weird and the folds weird and everything. And so when you're oil-free cooking, I don't know. I just think this is a cool way to do it. Because I've never seen anyone do it before. That's really the only reason why I <laughs> thought it was cool. And wait till you see how it comes out. You're going to be like, that's cool. I don't ever want to use a little loaf pan again. Well, and you don't have to turn the oven on for it. And isn't it done quicker than if you bake it in the oven? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. What loaf takes 20 minutes? Tell me. Put know. it in the comments. Okay. Um, we had questions. We had questions. Uh, your store. Your Amazon store. Oh, Where yeah. Is Why do you, can you want to pull that out? Because it's, yeah. is it bothering you? Yep. Yes. Okay. We just tipped everyone on. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not putting you on the spot right okay. now. Okay. All right. Oh, I am going to put you on the spot. Oh. You got really aggravated with me. You got really aggravated with me. Don't. You, <laughs> I well, got to get really you, aggravated I have with to, you right now. Okay, so I have to describe what time what time today you got really aggravated. The time when you went in the back room and you got one of my cookbooks out. And you're telling, what's the name of the loaf? Schmeatloaf. Schmeatloaf. Something. I forgot what it's called already. Eat loaf, schmeatloaf, or something. Eat loaf, schmeatloaf, right. And so you got really angry with me. Right. Why? Well, this is putting you on the spot. If it's putting you on the spot, I'm sorry. Because I said your recipe is in the book. Why not yeah. follow your recipe? Yes. Okay, so this is why. This is why you got really angry. Not angry. <laughs> you got like, you, you didn't you, understand. You were... 
you were getting out your spices and stuff. And I said, why don't you just look up your recipe in your book? Yes. Uh, uh, yes, you can put it in the oven for three seconds. So this is what happened. She's like, why don't you just look at the recipe? I don't like recipes and you shouldn't either. Well, I like recipes. But Heather likes recipes. Um, but he, the idea is this. What was in that other one? Do you even remember? Uh, chili powder, paprika, onion powder. Carrot. There was ca carrot. Okay, carrot. Okay, so what? this is what happened. This is what happened. So Heather went in, because I have a paperback book. She went in, looked it up. She goes, there's no carrot in it. And I put celery in this one. The other one didn't have celery. And do you want to know why? There's a really good explanation for that. That's just what I had laying around. So when I wrote the book, I probably had carrots and I didn't have carrots. celery. Right. Um, so it's, I'm not putting you on the spot for saying. But what I am saying is you don't have to get so crazy with recipes that they run your meal. Let it happen. That, that's why tonight I didn't measure because I just fill up half of it with lentils, the other half with your choice of whatever. I happen to like onions and eat loaf or shmeat loaf or whatever. Lazy loaf. Lazy loaf. Do you know where Schmeat loaf Lazy from? lentil loaf tonight. Where does Schmeat loaf come from? The Christmas story. The Christmas story. I that's, love that. That's one of Heather's I love favorite that show. Movies. The Christmas story. That's... Can you watch it now before Christmas time? No. Okay, oh, so we got. So we have to talk about stuff. Someone asked where the store is. Um, I don't really know. But somewhere on Amazon, if you, ter if you search mm, Fat Man's Favorites Kitchen <laughs> something... Um, Is it I'll under your website, Fat Man Rants? Probably not. Oh. I, I don't, I'm so bad at all this stuff. I, I'm sorry. I'm so bad at all this stuff. But somewhere in Amazon world, um, there's we have our own store set up. And everything that uh, we use, <laughs> and maybe should use, <laughs> it happens to be in that store. And you can buy it. And it's kind of cool because Amazon kicks us a couple couple pennies every time people buy it. So it's kind of a nice thing um, to, to buy tables and fill our garage with tables. Sure. Why yeah. not? Okay. So we have to talk. We have to talk um, about this. Holes. Holes. Yes. Okay. And when I say that, I go back to my kids are older. Our kids are older. But remember the Disney, was it a Disney movie, Holes? With Shia oh, LaBeouf. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. And that's what I picture these holes everywhere. And so I want to talk about that because I think a lot of people, and I'm going to try not to rant, but I think a lot of people um, have this problem on a journey that's, that's not even um, weight loss related, right? So, so let's be honest with each other. Um, a lot of the holes that we find ourselves in in life, um, we dig ourselves. Like, and so, I, I mean, I'm not calling anyone out. I'm just, in my mind, um, I did not become addicted to alcohol or fentanyl um, because someone, you know, hit it from me and snuck it. Like, it didn't happen that way. Um, it happened more like I didn't realize that I was digging. And then all of a sudden, I look up and I'm like, holy crap. See, that was a pun. I'm in a hole. Like, like, really, like, I didn't, I don't know what just happened, but I know that I got myself there. So, for me, I'll take, I'll use myself for an example. Um, you don't get to be 400 pounds. You don't get to be addicted to fentanyl. You don't get to be an alcoholic, and you don't get into this whole self loathing mentality unless you do that yourself. Like, I ate the food. No one. Unless you were putting food in my mouth while I was sleeping, I did it to myself. So that's, once you figure that out, once you figure, okay, so I put myself in this position. I dug this hole for myself, and now I have to get out. I'm not going to say that's easy. I'm not going to say that's an easy job to get out, but I get it. I get that what I ate all this food, so now I have to, like, uneat. I have to learn how to not eat that way anymore. I did that. But there's another kind of hole that I think sucks worse than that one. And this kind of hole is this. Um, I've been in a hole, like, activity-wise. And I didn't put myself there. Right. I didn't ask for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. 
Um, and a lot of my friends that I know didn't ask to have cancer and they didn't ask for uh, um, their spouse to pass away and they didn't ask for their you know parents to get sick or their children to get sick like those are holes that we don't dig but they're there yeah. they're there and 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 I think that sometimes those are the hardest holes to climb out of the ones that we don't dig all holes are hard to climb out of but the ones that like I like I got up this morning and I did not want to do anything on my bike like I I wore myself out yesterday I was so tired I was so miserable and this this thought in my head said this is bull crap I'm doing everything right I'm eating right. I'm taking care of myself. I didn't ask for this joint disease. I didn't ask for my ankle to get reconstructed and have it not come back like the way they thought it would. I didn't ask to not be able to walk good in the morning. I didn't ask to have a limp. I didn't do that. But it's here, and it is. So I have two choices. I can say, you know what? I didn't do this. It's not my fault. And just exist right there. Mm -hmm. Or I can say, you know what? It doesn't matter how I got to the bottom of this pit. I got to climb out, you know? And I think that's super hard. I think that's a that's a super hard concept uh, for me to get. Like, again, like I hate to repeat myself, but I get when I do something, you know, and I make a bad decision and I pay for it. Like you, what my mom always said, uh, you're, free, you're free to choose, but you're not free from the consequences. Right. Like, that's a no-brainer. Like, we tell our kids that. But sometimes we don't choose stuff. Right. Right? Sometimes things happen to set us back, whether it's financially or whatever, um, that we didn't choose. You know, no, no one chooses to have their home destroyed by a hurricane. But it happens, right? So, so I just wanted to talk about this concept super quick. And it's already related to be super quick about it. But just this is, this is in my mind. I see that movie, Holes, and there's holes everywhere. And I think that's a really good picture of what life really looks like. Because we get this thing, especially for people in my situation. I've been on this journey. You know, I've overcome. You know, I'm so blessed and so grateful. You know, that my God-given second chance that I was able to overcome fentanyl addiction, which is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. You know, I overcome alcoholism and... You know, lost 200 pounds and, and got rid of a lot of my chronic illness. And, and I'm so thankful for that. But here's the thing. You get caught up in, you know, I dug myself out of this hole. I'm at the top. And we get this mental picture that now it's all clean sailing. And that's not what happens, right? Because guess what? About the time you get your stride, boom, there's another hole. Whether you put it there or you didn't, there's another hole. And so I think, I think this is how we have to handle stuff. This took me a long time to learn. I had lost weight. You know, I did, I did all the stuff, the outside stuff, but I never worked in here until I thought about this. That some days are going to suck and some days are not. And sometimes you're going to go to battle and you're going to lose. And that happens. That happens. But here's the key to this whole thing. When you lay your head down at night, you got to remember the next morning you're fighting all over, over again. And you never stop clawing. You never stop fighting. Because as soon as you do, you're sitting in another hole. And, and I think that the key to this whole thing is don't think that your journey ends when you get to the top of the hole. Because if you're on a journey that's worth going, you're moving forward, you're going to hit another hole. You're going to climb another mountain. You're going to hit another hole. This is life. And this is the biggest takeaway. If you guys listen to one thing I say tonight, it's this. Oh, I'm getting ranty. I'm sorry. Look it. You are worth fighting those battles. Every single morning you get up, you put your gloves on, and you fight another day. Because you're worth it. You're worth that fight. And win or lose, you're thinking tomorrow you're going to get up and fight the same fight. And here's the thing. As long as you learn to change your mindset that you're always going to be climbing out of holes, it's just part of your life. It's what you do. You know? 
Oh, I'm sorry for the rant. Um, it's I that's been uh, that's for me like that. I want to I want to rewatch this tomorrow and hear myself say that because it's so easy to get in a pity party when you didn't make the hole. Like I did not put that hole there in front of me, and I want like in my mind like I'm doing everything right. I want to be fit again. I want to I want to go run 50 miles, but I can't hardly walk still, right? I I I can. And I'm trying, I'm trying my hardest. And that's the easiest place to get in a pity party. Um, but I know this is my job. My job is to just keep taking one more step, one more step. And eventually, I bet you, I bet you, I'm gonna level out and I'm gonna get back on level ground and I'm gonna find my stride again. Yes, so there you go. That is an official rant. We'll call that an official rant. Along with your lentil loaf, you get a free rant as a bonus. Lazy lentil loaf. Lazy lentil loaf. Your lazy lentil loaf still has five minutes. Wow. How come? I don't know, but that. Did you put too much time on. That it? felt good getting that out. I'm sorry. Um, that felt good getting that out. Do you have anything to say that I don't put you on the spot? Nope. No. Not tonight. So the the reality is this is your fault. Oh, my fault. Yes, the rant is your fault. So yesterday, oh. Heather. Um, Heather went and ran uh, my my absolute first half marathon, and I ran that marathon with a still valid handicap parking pass. And I loved watching you run. It was it was beautiful. It was lovely. It was it wasn't lovely because I we use that description. It was a beautiful. It was lovely. It was hot. <laughs> it was hot as hell. Very hot. <laughs> but. It was so beautiful watching you run that, and all I could think of like. I love watching you, but I want to be out there. Like, I saw all these people running. So I want to run. I want to run with the gang. You know, I want to do that again. And and then it started hitting me. It's like, I'm do, what can I do differently? Like, I'm doing, I'm doing PT, and I, I'm doing all my exercise, and I, I'm busting my butt. I, I don't, I've, I've ridden almost 300 miles this month, and it's only the 22nd. I'm working, 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 and I'm eating great, and I friggin' freaking can't kick this thing and so that's why my rant and it, and and i hope my rant helped it help someone other than myself but it felt good to get that off my chest is the rant done it's good because i'm sweating already yes. again why don't we go check your lazy lentil <laughs> loaf do you feel um you didn't like my rant did you i didn't say i didn't like your rant i was almost in tears Oh, with your rant. All right. I didn't know. Are, are you just so hungry? So I had to be. Because the lentil loaf has like two, three more minutes. So. Um, I didn't want to start crying because I thought you would get teared up. I thought it was a good rant. No, I'm not. I'm not going to get teared up because it, you know what? I just got to keep moving. Like I can't feel bad for myself. It's easy to feel bad for yourself. Yeah, I get I, that. I felt bad yesterday because I set out. I had a goal that I wanted to hit. And I, this is the second time I still have not hit it yet. So, yeah, I was a little frustrated yesterday. But then, like you said, I realized that that was my first half marathon, too. And um, I had to remember how far I had come from the last time I ran that. Yes. And I will still try to get my goal next time. And that's you bring up another point, and I'm not putting you on the spot. But it's really good sometimes to glance in that rearview mirror. Some some people that I know personally know um, get so caught up in looking behind of what they were that they forget that they're still driving forward. So it's important we don't dwell in the past. But it's also really important to take a quick glance once in a while and say, you know what, I'm ticked off. Um, but at the same time, you know, ten years ago for me to ride three hundred miles in twenty days, it's well, that would be crazy, you know. That would be crazy. So, um, I'm in a really good place, and and I'm getting there mentally. And I'm just, I just got to focus on battling through today and get into tomorrow. Um, there you go. So now, I think you need to go check your. There's a fire. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> no, kidding. I'm not, just kidding. No. Somebody... I would not be sitting here very <laughs> calm like this. Thank you, Kathy. The house finally got done. It finally got sided. Oh, and, this looks lovely. And thank you. Yes, my daughter brought me two 
nice mums this, t this afternoon. She brought her mum a mum or two. Are you going to get, are you taking it out? Yes. Okay. I want to make sure if I burn myself that people see me. Okay. Because nothing says Facebook Live like me burning myself with everyone watching. Oh, do you know what this looks like? Lovely. It looks lovely. It looks hot, too. All right, so there you go. Now, who asked why? This is probably going to hurt. Why? You didn't why? bake it in the pan? Yes. I think it was fake. Okay, so look it. This is why. Don't eat the paper. That's why. That is just... And now if you cut into it... We and won't. See how crunchy and I'll it is. tell you why we won't cut into it. Because this has to cool. And we're not going to be around as long as it has to cool. But what, what you want to do with this stuff, and any of this stuff, um, is let it cool down before you try to cut it. But, you know, this is, we could make a couple of these. And I just think this is a really nice way. You want me to try to take a, a slice off the end? I will. We'll take a slice off the end. Um, and that's. Ah, it's so hot. Can you see that? Ah, it's quite lovely. All right? Yep. Oh, does that look good or what? Wait, are we, we're, we're backwards. We're backwards, hold on. All right. What do you guys think about that? Is that cool? I like, I just thought of that like, like yesterday. Um, I thought it would be. Lazy lentil loaf. Lazy lentil loaf. And you can have lentil loaf, and I'm going to say, well, here's the thing. If you have the lentils pre-cooked, um, you can't count that because you use that for prepping. But um, you could totally do the same thing with rice. I'm glad no one asked that, but you could. You could do the same thing with the rice. Heck, you could probably do the same thing with black beans or a bean mix. Um, anything, really. Um, the key is that half veggies and half... Uh, beans or grains or a mixture of both mm -hmm. and um, then the spices kind of make it what it is it smells very delicious it does and it looks quite lovely and sherry you don't necessarily have to have an air fry but i will tell you this they do make life a lot easier especially if you put potatoes in there the air fryer is the new instapot really <laughs> well Oh my gosh, I wish I could see myself 10 years ago saying this kind of, this is crazy to me, but we did it. So I think we, we did, did a good it. job. Yeah. All right. And you didn't get put on the spot. That's right. You didn't have to cook and people had to listen to me the whole night. Right. So listen. So listen. I owe you guys one next week. Yes. Maybe as long as we get car. back in time. We are headed to Washington, oh, well, D.C. Yeah, for a, a book signing Sign Not sign, I don't know what it is, but we're selling cookbooks and signing them and talking to people um, at the reduction. We don't know what it's called, but it's the Crystal be. something Marriott in Washington, D.C. And then Crystal be on Gateway Marriott. Crystal Gateway Marriott. Go there, you'll find it. It's the reductionist seminar. No, conference, conference, it's a conference. I will not be speaking there. However, um, we will have a table set up with books. I heard the Lajanis are coming, which is yes. super, super fun. So stop by. Um, it's going to be a great conference. And the best part is, I don't have to speak. And I'm pretty happy about that. I don't either. And, that, and, then, and she's happy about that. So we'll see you in Washington on Saturday or Sunday. Reductionarian. That thing. The Reductionarian. And I know what that is. I'm assuming it's reducing the amount of animal products that we consume. Um, then I wanted to say something else that I totally forgot. The meetup is in two weeks. <laughs> no, it wasn't about the meetup. Oh, I know what I was going to say because I never say this and I always forget. Listen, if you like these lives or maybe you just feel that... They're funny, like they're entertaining. Um, hit share and give us a share. Share us in your favorite group. Share us to friends and family um, because we are really bad at this. And we don't share our own stuff, which maybe we should start. Maybe. Because sharing is caring. So we appreciate that. Yeah. All right. That's what Sounds I want to say. And I remember that. So 
This week, listen, just a little recap. If, if, if you're in a bad spot, if you're in a bad spot, um, it's okay. It's okay. Because things can get better. If anyone knows this, it's me. Um, I know that. And I know, I know the feeling of not caring if you wake up in the morning. But now I also know the feeling of loving myself enough to fight for another morning. Um, and there's a lot of people that are fighting for another morning. Um, so you're not alone in this thing. So listen, keep digging, keep clawing. If you're in a bad spot, just keep trying to get out of that spot and don't ever, ever, ever give up. And until next week, eat plants. Move your body. All you got to do is a little more than you did yesterday. We'll see you next week, guys. Take care.